Glenn is up next. Oops. Glenn is going to be talking about ranked choice voting. Woohoo! Yep. So let me go set up the presentation and make sure. Try the dimmer switch on the left there. Uh, that was a bit there. <laughs> there you go. There we hey. go. Okay. Uh, my name is Glenn Wyke, and I'm the vice chair of the Milford Democratic Town Committee. Today I'm going to talk about ranked choice voting. Before we actually talk about ranked choice voting, let's talk about some of the problems we have with our current electoral system. Um, uh, especially when you have multiple candidates in an election, you don't need a majority to win. And really, in order to best represent the constituencies in a district, a town, what have you, should really have a majority, or the goal should always be to have a majority. Uh, we also have this concept of vote splitting and the spoiler effect, where because you only have one vote, you have to st strategically pick who you're going to um, select as the candidate that you want to win. Um, and we'll talk about those more in a moment. Uh, next slide. Um, so here is a good example of how you don't need a majority. This is the, um, uh, the gubernatorial race of 2010 in Maine. And as you can see, Paula Page won with 37.6% of the vote. That also means that 62% of the citizens of Maine did not vote for Paula Page. Um, so what kind of mandate does he really have to govern in the state? Um, wait, go back. Uh, also, uh, this isn't even the worst case scenario. If, if all of those candidates had similar support, in theory, Paul LePage could have won with 20% plus one vote, and then 79% of the citizens of Maine would not have voted for him. So you can see there's, there's a problem with legitimacy there, potentially, uh, with someone who would win in that scenario. Uh, then there's the concept of vote splitting, and here, uh, this is the um, a gubernatorial uh, Democratic primary from 2014. And the issue here I'm trying to point out is that uh, both Steve Grossman and Don Berwick were pretty similar in ideology, um, pretty strong candidates. But because they were both running, uh, they split their vote and uh, Martha Coakley ended up winning instead um, on an entirely different platform. And then the dreaded spoiler effect. I think everybody is aware of the spoiler effect. Um, uh, in this particular case, uh, going back to Maine again, 2014, um, Mike Michaud was kind of the consensus candidate uh, to run against Paul LePage. Uh, but Elliot Cutler, who had challenged LePage in the, in the prior uh, slide um, and pushed him pretty hard, he ended up, I think, with 35% of the vote. Um, he decided to run again anyway. Uh, and uh, despite a lot of begging and pleading towards the end of the race for him to drop out, uh, he ended up as what is considered uh, as a consensus, uh, being a spoiler and allowing Paula Page to win again. So uh, the goals of ranked choice, um, again, uh, uh, to, to try and uh, gain a majority to further legitimize the election, but also to try to have more positive campaigns. Um, in, in, in a general uh, election scenario that we have now, um, you probably have a core uh, base of voters, um, but you're, you're only really trying to stoke your voters and not really appeal to a broader audience. In this case, um, you're, you're actually looking for second and third votes who could potentially um, help swing an election your way. So you may have a core uh, base of voters but you don't want to offend anybody else. Now, does it always work out that way? No, not necessarily. Um, but for sure, campaigns have been more positive where this has been tried out. Uh, more voices and more choices. Um, obviously, it allows for more third-party choices. Um, the country has always made major changes when more third parties are allowed a voice in elections. And they do serve a very important purpose uh, over time. Um, uh, if you go back to the Civil War, the Republican Party organized around uh, uh, an anti-slavery platform. Um, we've had populists at the turn of the 20th century uh, who got past um, uh, allowing us to vote for our own senators and antitrust legislation. And the list goes on and on of these third parties popping up, putting pressure on 
the major parties to do something and actually getting some major changes. Um, it also eliminates the lesser evil voting. Um, in, in the case of the prior scenario, if you really did want to vote for Mr. Cutler, you could as your primary choice, um, but you could also vote for uh, Mike Michaud or Paul LePage as your second choice, and therefore you, you wouldn't, quote, waste, waste your vote, as they say. Um, it also tends, as they say, for more moderation in that um, I, I don't like the word moderation. Um, I would say it allows uh, the general outcome to more closely represent citizens rather than uh, what we have now. And so how, how does ranked choice voting work? Um, this is for three or more candidates in a, in a given election. And every voter would get a ballot um, and it would have three columns in it. Uh, and, and for every candidate, you would pick one. Uh, in, in the first column, it would be your first choice. Uh, the second column, your second choice. The third column, your third choice. Um, in the first round of counting, everybody's first choice would be counted. Um, if after that first round, somebody has reached the 50% threshold, the election is over and the winner is found. If that isn't the case, um, then the candidate with the least amount of votes would have their votes move to those voters' second choice, and those votes would be <clears throat> distributed to the next choice. And so let's go to the next one. So here's my illustration. Um, going back to the first um, uh, election uh, uh, example that I gave, uh, Paul LePage and uh, the gubernatorial race in Maine from 2010, we have five candidates here. And in this case, uh, Kevin L. Scott is the lowest vote total getter. In order, to, in order to keep things very simple, let's just assume that all of their second choice votes went to Paul LePage. So Paul LePage's total would now be 39%, thanks to my wonderful paint uh, skills there. Um, <laughs> And, and uh, then um, we would check to see, does anybody have 50%? The answer is no. So then we would move to the next. Uh, now, uh, Sean Moody's um, votes are redistributed. And once again, um, luckily for Paula Page, all of them went to him. And now he's up to 44.3%. But again, he doesn't have 50%. So we have to do another round. And in this case, Elizabeth Mitchell would have her votes um, moved and it happens to go to Elliot Cutler in this case, and he ends up with 50%, and he ends up winning. Now, I made that super simple, um, but obviously uh, not everybody's vote is going to go in one direction or another, and so it, it is a fairly complex process. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, the, one of the major issues of ranked choice voting is just the complexity. And it's not insurmountable, obviously, um, but it's a little more complicated to vote. You know, people are going to have to pick multiple choices for a given, um, a given uh, office versus just one. Um, there's going to be complexity in counting the votes. It's probably not something that someone is going to be able to do by hand. Um, and so we'll need some kind of computer, um, hopefully with some open source software or uh, well designed uh, in advance to do that counting. Um, and even complexity in educating the public and uh, introducing other potential pitfalls that can happen um, with initial uh, attempts at ranked choice voting. Uh, where is ranked choice voting implemented? Uh, in Cambridge, I believe, they're doing ranked choice voting for some time in, in town elections. Uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, several towns in California, and a bunch of other municipalities all over the United States. Uh, one of the reasons why I picked Maine um, as examples is they have passed ranked choice voting for uh, uh, statewide elections. Uh, they're still in the process of implementing it. Uh, they've run into some snags uh, and some uh, challenges. Yes? Did the governor sign it? Uh, I don't think they've gotten to that point yet. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see what happens once they come to some kind of consensus. Uh, but the legislature is still kind of hashing it out right now. Uh, there, were, there, there were some court challenges. Uh, it put it up in the air for a while, and now they are attempting to uh, figure out how to get it done. Um, 
Next slide. Uh, questions? Um, I think in Maine, the legislature where Republicans were united against it and Democrats were split, did a, well, we're going to postpone it another two years and then get rid of it. And um, they, the, the proponents of RCV or IRB have mobilized. Apparently, there's a law that says if you get another ballot initiative on um, for, to basically overturn what the legislature did, then the rule or the law has to go into effect until after the election. And so hopefully the voters will again vote to uphold it and that, that uh, change by the legislature will go away. Yes. Um, also, San Francisco uses uh, IRB and her Well, it's San Francisco, Berkeley, and Oakland, maybe? Something like that? Uh, I know San Francisco did, like, over a decade ago. Yep. Ireland uses it. Northern Ireland, Ireland uses it. Malta. Um, there's a bunch of places. So are you suggesting that Milford should go to this? Milford's suggestion? Or you just bring this up to college? Um, I, I think that it's a preferable... Uh, election style alternative to what we have now, where, as I was saying before, um, our system kind of forces us into uh, a Coke or Pepsi battle, where really uh, I think we'd be better if we had more voices um, uh, uh, discussing issues. Uh, and, and the Pirate Party, the Green Party, DSA, um, the Libertarian Party, they all have things to contribute in, in our national conversation, and I don't think we're getting that right now. I'm sorry, the question was in Milford, right? Yes. Yes. But you're not suggesting that this type of voting be in our town elections, are you? Um, I, First of all, we're going to get the candidates to run for town elections. <laughs> right. That's, that's the initial problem. Right. Before you start rank, rank voting in a, in a town, uh, in my experience, I mean, over the years there haven't been too many ties with more than uh, two people who run for the office, all right? So certainly that was true the last time around, right? We only had two candidates for each slot. Mm -hmm. so you know, really took this, uh, again, my question is, are you proposing that this be done on, in the town of Milford? For, for, me, for me, this is just informative. Okay, so you're proposing it really for on a national level. That would be like a state or national level. I would say so, yes. Go ahead. I have a point about this in Maine. Um, it's very hard to get this through the state legislature, or the, never mind the federal, because the parties benefit from the system as it is. So um, it passed by referendum in May, uh, excuse me, in November of the last, you know, during the Trump election, where everyone else was distracted. And immediately, the Maine state legislature put the kibosh on it. And uh, tried to get it repealed, and now it's like not even going to take effect. If it takes effect at all until. Right? Mm -hmm. Where they come up with anything? So this is a now a rape choice, uh, voter choice, Massachusetts. They're trying to get it on the ballot, I think. So that's an organization to get involved with, Voter Choice Massachusetts. Um, we've gotten involved with that, and um, yeah, uh, the Democratic uh, State Committee has taken it onto their platform, but a lot of stuff goes to the Democratic well, Committee I mean, to just... Let's just talk about the basics, die. right? You've got the two <laughs> primary candidates. Call them what you will. Two primary... When are you ever going to get those two candidates to agree to let's let everybody have a voice? That's why you do a referendum. But That's how you got legal. You can't get it in the country. Why would we get it on the state level? You have to do it on the state level. You have to get pot legalized on the state level. See, see the, the, the country level, the, we right. have we have the Electoral College, and that's a constitutional issue, so that would be a much bigger lift. But for something like this, you the Constitution. On, on a state level, this is certainly we could change. Right. Um, I, think we're I think we're basically out of time on this. Sure. And on the next thing. Thank you very much, Blake.